Hello there. It is I, your guy, DK, and I'm driving home from work. Oh, and there's a big old storm in front of me with these giant fluffy clouds that look delicious and there's lightning in them and all kinds of fun stuff. Seems like I only record when there's bad weather. I was going to record a few days ago and on the way home it was raining terribly so I couldn't. And uh, the other time I just didn't feel like it. So yeah, uh, I said before these wouldn't be on a set schedule so pfft, whatever. I'll do it when it feels right. And gosh, it feels right. Hello, how have you been? I've been mighty busy with work and things, and uh, I'm excited to say that I finally have seen Solo, a Star Wars story, and I'm... Hmm, I won't do spoilers yet, because it's pretty early, and people may not have seen it yet, so I won't drop any spoilers on you, so rest assured. I'm just going to say my feelings on it uh, in, a, in a general way, and you can, you can see it for yourself or not. Uh, I have to say that I did not want that movie. I don't think we needed that movie. I still don't think we needed that movie. Um, I would rather have had something entirely new or maybe something on a character who maybe needs it. Like, for whatever reason, I feel like we could do an Obi-Wan movie or like... I don't know, Young Yoda. That'd be fun, even though we don't need that. Um, I think I think Obi Wan, like what what he was up to on Tatooine. I think I've heard some cool pitches for for ideas, like Obi Wan, like on a small scale, like Obi Wan saves a town. <laughs> you know, like I, I, I've heard some cool some cool stories, and I think that's uh, an interesting one. Like Obi Wan is on Tatooine, and there's ruffians in his whatever in a local town, and someone needs his help, but he can't use the Force or whatever, because then Vader might find him. I don't know, something. I've heard some interesting ideas, but you know you want to see him use the Force. Come on. Anyway, back to Solo. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to take in in that movie, and my first concern was that because the movie was directed by technically three different people, uh, the original directors, which was a directing team, and then Ron Howard took over, I was worried that it would be all tonally messed up and not work. And I have to say, it feels like a complete movie. It feels like it was meant to be the way it is. It doesn't feel like a broken mess. Uh, there are some things shown to you that you may have wanted to see from Han Solo's past. And there are some things that you see in here that you maybe thought, oh, I would have liked that to be just legendary in my mind, but nothing really offended me. I have to say, um, I was less offended and more delighted by some of the things that are thrown at you. I, I think probably the bits in the movie that delighted me the most were these crazy references that they pulled from the expanded universe. I don't think a normal person's going to get them to be quite honest, not to sound like a Star Wars fan elitist or whatever, but I just don't think a normal Star Wars fan even, if you're just a fan of the movies and you never read the books, you will not get these references. You just won't. You couldn't. Um, but as I've mentioned on here many times, the Star Wars novels and I, the expanded universe, I read them all as a kid. I, so many books. It's crazy. And there were some fantastic references to things in the comics and uh, the books and the... Uh, well, I won't say what else, but one reference in particular I'm baffled by, but delighted. I can't believe it's technically canon now. It's amazing. Um, you know, you get to see Lando. That's not a that's not a spoiler. He's in all the trailers. He's he's probably the most perfect. I feel like the guy that plays Han is is pretty close. There are moments when he looks like Harrison Ford. There are moments when he sounds like Harrison Ford. But I still have a tough time buying him as, as Han Solo. And it's just because Harrison Ford is, you know, he's just there. He's Harrison Ford. He's Han Solo. He's, he's so hard to replace. He's so hard to... You just can't. So, good effort. It, it, and uh, honestly, the, it's not the dude's fault. He's fine. He doesn't do anything wrong. I think it's fine. There's nothing wrong with his performance. And I don't think they do anything out of character or whatever. Uh, Chewbacca gets quite a bit of uh, 
cool stuff to do. Um, I like I like what they gave him to do. He he's more fleshed out in this one. He's not just Han Solo's buddy. He does, he has some other interesting things going on and some motivations and whatever. So I dig that. And again, you see some stuff from him that's only alluded to in the expanded universe before. I dig that. Um, there's a couple of characters from the EU and other movies. Uh, again, I won't spoil anything, but there's one big reveal that, you know, it, it's definitely, it's clearly meant to set something up. I don't know what, but it could be interesting and I'm happy about it. Um, yeah, so all in all, I feel like it was a good movie. Uh, it, it's solid. It really is solid. But I don't feel like it's necessary. However, I'm glad it exists. And to be honest, I would watch a sequel. I'm kind of interested to see where it could go now that they've answered some of these basic questions. I'm definitely interested to see where it goes. I think they got some some room in there for another movie or two in this series. So I kind of hope they do another one. I think it could be better. And it's not it's certainly not the best Star Wars movie. I'd put it above the prequels still. Um, it just isn't necessary, you know? I don't know. I, I, it's just hard to shake that feeling. But again, it's good. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no part of the movie where I go, oh, come on. There were one or two little things that bothered me, but there really wasn't anything devastatingly bad. So all these things you see about, oh, it's the worst box office, blah, blah, blah. It's probably a lot of fans like me who weren't sure if they needed it. And to be honest, I don't need it. Uh, but at the same time, I'm going to buy the Blu-ray. I'm going to watch the movie forever. It's Star Wars, and it definitely lives up to the Star Wars name in many ways. It's good. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's worth your time. I almost feel like it's a Star Wars movie. It might be more for people who aren't as into it. This is weird to say, considering I just told you about all those fun references. But it might be more fun for people who don't know the character that well. Or the stuff. I don't know. It might be fun to see that for a new fan, maybe. Because I already have all that that information that I knew or thought I knew until they erased it. You know, that might be more fulfilling for a new person to see it. I don't know. Anyway, I, I, I give it a thumbs up. I'm not going to give it like a number rating, but I'll give it a... In a yes or no situation, I'm definitely going to give it a yes. Um, so yeah, that's Star Wars Solo. I enjoyed it. Uh, what else has been going on? I picked up the, in the gaming world, the Bloodstained Curse of the Moon prequel game. That's a prequel to Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Pardon me. <laughs> it's a prequel game to a game that's coming out later in the year that I kickstarted years ago at this point. Like literally years ago which was meant to be a spiritual successor to Castlevania. Um, this this is a, a retro-style minigame. And minigame, I say loosely because it's the length of a complete game. It's uh, it's essentially they, they sort of take the best parts of the, the middle Castlevanias, like 3 and 4, and they, they make it look like it's roughly 16-bit, though they they don't quite stick with that. I think there's some stuff that you couldn't, you just couldn't do in a 16 bit, but it's pretty close, a pretty good representation of a 16 bit game. And it does a really good job of making it unique and not just feeling like here, we cloned all this stuff from the old games. Uh, they kind of, they kind of did a really polished, it's, it's like all old ideas probably, but just like recycled in a way that feels fresh. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's great. I, I really do like it. I mean, one look at it, and you, if you know me, you'll go, oh yeah, I get why he likes it. It looks like Castlevania. It looks like a 16-bit game, which is my favorite era of gaming, probably. Or or an era that I have a huge amount of nostalgia for, anyway. And, uh... Yeah, the, the music is fantastic. The graphics are fantastic. It's, uh... It's cool because you get these, um... Different characters. You The first couple of bosses that you defeat, you gain those bosses spirits or I don't know how do you explain it but the bosses were trapped in evil form and then you free them and they become allies who you can then they, they become playable characters 
there is one main character, I guess, but really you're you're playing as all of them. So you have this uh, the regular guy who they all have a main color. Uh, the main guy's red. He has a sword, and his uh, extra abilities are so it's kind of neat because if you play Castlevania, you know that there's an alternate weapon that you are picking up in item pickups, and each character has. Not only a main weapon, but then the alternate either ability or set of weapons they could pick from. So each character has a different pool of weapons to draw from, which is neat. And so depending on which character you are when you get the pickup, it's going to give you a different alternate weapon, which I think is really interesting. So, the main dude's red. He, his main weapon's a sword. Really short range. Feels a little like Alucard, to be honest, in the beginning. Uh really short range, but he's quick. He can attack multiple times very quickly. And uh, his, his alternate weapons are like a diagonal or like a yeah, like a diagonal almost like a whip slash. Um, and then his other alternate weapon is like remember in Castlevania, like the what is it? Like fl the flame you throw down like holy water, I guess. You throw it down and it does damage at a certain point on the ground for a certain amount of time. And then the second character is like your your typical like Simon Belmont, Castle, uh, Castlevania whip haver. She's uh, she has a whip, and then her alternates are stuff like the crucifix that you throw, but it's not a crucifix. It's it's real close. Um, then there's an old um, alchemist dude whose whose melee attack is pretty terrible. It's slow, but it I don't know. It's hard to explain it, but it's slow and no range. But his magical abilities are fantastic. And then there's a Dracula-looking fella, who's not Dracula, but hmm, he's clearly a vampire. He wears the cape. He walks around with his arms crossed. His main attack is just he throws bats at you. And then his alternate ability is he turns into a bat and can fly. So he doesn't have an alternate attack, but he does. He turns into a bat so you can access different locations and then fly at a high speed. And that's, that counts as an attack because you can go through enemies. Most enemies are killed in one attack or two. Unless they're a special attack. And then, you know, you have your basic um, levels with branching paths. There's not really any backtracking. Like, not, not so much Metroid, but very much, like, uh, alternate paths, depending on which character you want to use. And then uh, boss fights at the end. And then certain characters might be better for certain bosses, just depending on the way you're playing. It's fun. It's really good. I'm on the last level. I haven't finished it yet. There's two modes of play. There's, like, a... There's like a basic mode. It's like a modern mode. When you get hit, you, you you aren't knocked back, which is super... If you've played Old Castlevania, you know the knockback is like the number one death. For me, anyway. Most of my deaths come from being knocked off of something. When you take damage, you'll fly back. This basic mode, uh, unlimited lives and uh, no knockback. And also, when, you, when one character dies... So it's cool. Each character has their own health bar. So if one character takes an excess damage, you can swap them out and then play as someone with more HP. If a character loses all their HP, they die until the end of the level and they come back. I think that's how it works. Or there's a, like a um, revival item. And I haven't done it. I don't know. Um, but if all your characters die, you restart from either a certain checkpoint or the beginning of the level, depending on which mode you're playing. So, yeah, and then the the hardcore one has adds knockback, adds fi finite lives, and uh, it's much harder. So, that's interesting. I'll I'll do that mode eventually, but right now I'm just playing the easier mode. We just <sighs> why is the yawning happening all of a sudden? Anyway, right now I'm playing on the easier mode, and uh, that's probably for the best. So now I can learn the game and then go back through on the more difficult level, which I think I will. I know a couple streamer friends who I think will very much enjoy this game. It's very good. It's kind of become an instant, just an instant love of mine. I really love From minute one, I was like, yep, this game's good. This game's good. And it's made by people who are old school Castlevania people. So I'm looking forward to Bloodstained as well, the, the full version. I hope that series does well. Uh, yeah, so that's great. Um, pick it up. It's only 10 bucks if you buy it. I got it because I'm a Kickstarter backer, but uh, yeah, it's a really good one. Um, 
trying to think what else I should tell you about. There's been... It feels like so much going on. Uh, uh, the new Ghost album comes out tonight at midnight. Looking forward to it. I've featured them on Song of the Day before. And in fact, I uh, may do so again maybe today, like maybe right now, like maybe... If I did something like a feature... DK Song of the Day, sponsored by Dr. Thunder. This is a feature. Which I don't do, um, then this would be the time. So there's a song on their first album um, called Ritual. And it sounds like uh, like 70s rock, basically. Now, this is a band that's evolved a little bit. And I featured them before. I, did, I gave you Rats. Rats! Um, that song is so fun but this is an older song uh, what is what year did it come out maybe 2010 or so so uh, about 8 years old roughly and uh, so their sound has evolved and so this is going to be a more raw uh, version of them it's kind of their basic form but I really like it because it does sound retro and old it's such a simple such a simple song um, here we go this is what you're looking for such a simple rock riff. So simple. Um, not much going on. Basically just guitar, drums, vocals, bass. Maybe some keyboard, and that's about it. Um, let's see here. Let's Like a Metallica riff. Yeah. Doesn't that sound like Metallica? This one's pretty catchy. It'll be in your head for a while. This is when they were really pushing the... Uh, I mean, they still are, I guess, but... This whole album is just like Satan this, Satan that. It's all like... You know, like fake satanic stuff. Uh, here's the... Yeah, chorus. Super catchy. It's super catchy. Um, it's a fun listen. And look, it, he's talking about all this devil stuff, but you know it's a joke, right? It's a joke. <laughs> They're not, they don't really want you to go out and worship the devil. It's, it's, it's so extreme that it's a comical thing. So I hope you don't, I hope no one is offended. If you were, come on, grow up. It's just for fun. Hey, I mean, he is dressed like an evil pope. <laughs> Oh, it's good times. It's fun. Listen, that's a good catchy song. Uh, Ritual is what it's called from their first album. Uh, it's very poppy. It feels kind of like 70s rock. It's pretty easy to get into. I uh, just hydroplaned. That was fun. Right when a semi was coming. Could have been could have been real bad. But it wasn't. It was not. Oh, what else has been going on? Uh, I've just been watching bad movies just been chilling out we've been doing the stream again a little bit not as much as i want to but we have been doing it a little bit last stream we played was like the house flipper game which i think had i not been so tired would have been a lot more <laughs> would have been a lot more fun the best the best bit was at the end when we stopped playing the game and then we're just talking about nonsense and we were talking about i had this nightmare about the movie for, based on the movie flipper oh that was great. And we did play Friday the 13th recently, and I had such a good time, you guys. I just... It's so much fun. And actually, if you haven't played it yet, they added a single-player mode to that, where it's essentially... They make Friday the 13th into Hitman. So they give you the little scenario, and it's like, oh, two characters are in the cabin, and they're making dinner, and Jason needs to get in there and take care of them. How are you going to do it? Um... And you go in there and you, you know, murder them in fun ways. And there's multiple ways to do it. And, you know, you get bonuses by not being detected or by blah, blah, blah. It's just like Hitman, but you play as Jason Voorhees and you're just murdering these college kids. And it's funny because they make, you know, they make you hate these people. You know, they're so annoying and terrible. Uh, <laughs> so you feel like you're the good guy, kind of, in some twisted way. So I'm, I've, I've been enjoying that. Those are really fun uh, and fun to play together. It's it's a single player game, but um, if you have someone with you, I think they'll you know they'll have a good time. 
if you're if you're into that sort of thing. It's almost like watching a Friday the Thirteenth movie in some ways. So that's really fun, and I'm so happy we played that again. I had such a good time on that stream. A couple times I was laughing so hard I couldn't breathe. Uh, so thanks to everyone who, if you're listening and you participated, thank you so much. That was great. I really, I really enjoyed that. That was a good time. Um, Hopefully we can do another stream soon. I've got a couple of things I'd like to do, but it's all up to whether or not Steve wants to do it. She feels like it. She's pretty pregnant right now. <laughs> things are up and down, so just going to give you a heads up. You never know what she's going to feel like. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can go. We can be on there again soon. I really appreciate everybody's support and uh, hanging out with us. Countdown begins to when Doom is coming. If anyone has any suggestions on what we can do, I might I might have him on an episode of this. It would be stupid not to, right? I may sit down with him and have a conversation about stuff. Would you guys like that? Uh, this is your invitation, Doom, if you're listening. You, I would love you to be on this just for fun. We can talk about whatever you want to talk about. I think that'd be good. Uh, yeah, and also, I, I sent you a message, but I haven't heard a response yet. But I, I would like to formally challenge you to the drunk Metal Gear Solid race that we talked about last year in July for my birthday. I haven't played the game since, uh, and I would love to do the drunk race with you. We should work out the details, but I think that would be a magical night. Uh, imagine our conversation while we try to get through this... Uh, <laughs> this uh, silly game we love so much so if uh if you guys would like to see that uh if you uh if you if your name is kodum and you'd like to participate in that let me know or if anyone would like to participate in that you the only stipulation is that we must be you must be drinking and we're gonna probably i'd like to set some kind of like oh when when you beat ocelot you drink a beer or whatever the thing is when you when you do this you have a drink when you whatever so we're all at the same amount uh, that would be so much fun, right? Uh, well, within your limits, of course, and whatever. I, I want it to be fun and not, you know, not not in a mean way. I've played drinking games where people are, like, mean. Like, you gotta drink, bro! And you're like, I'm so sick, don't. And they're like, do it, <laughs> you pansy! Come on, we're not gonna do that. It'll all be fun. Uh, but I think we could have a really good time with that, so, yeah. And, um, yeah, uh, I think that's it for now. Uh, I had a fun time telling you about Solo and about ghost songs. And I, I'm excited to give you my review of the ghost album that comes out and uh, my thoughts on other stuff in general. I, uh, yeah, I hope to. Oh, I saw uh, I saw Rainbow earlier. That was fun. <laughs> no, no leprechaun, though. I'm still looking. Anyway, um, I'm moving into some lightning storm area, and it's starting to get rough out here, so I'm going to let you go. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. And as always, may the Force be with you, and uh, I'll talk to you very soon. Okay? Thank you. Bye. Bye.